With a $39 million pay package, Yahoo's Carol Bartz topped the Glass Lewis list of overpaid CEOs running underperforming companies. Yahoo's stock is down more than 6% for the year, but our next guest says its assets are quite attractive to potential suitors. Sachin Shah is a special situations and merger arbitrage strategist at Capstone Global Markets. Always good to have you on. Thank Thanks you, so Mark. Happy Thursday. <laughs> right back at you. Let's get right to it. Sure. Uh, before you came in last block, our Adam Johnson was doing some of the breakdown of the numbers, and I think they bear repeating. As far as Yahoo is concerned, 18 billion enterprise value, 3.7 billion in cash, 13 billion in investments, and a core business of 14 billion dollars. I would imagine that's very attractive to potential suitors. Yes. Well, if you, let's take a step back here. When we're having kind of a discussion about Yahoo, we're talking about valuation. Sure. So earlier this morning, I kind of went over uh, the dynamics of the valuation. So you have 10 to 12, 10 to 12 dollars of investments that they have in Alibaba and Yahoo Japan. So when you net that out, um, as well as the cash that they have, which is approximately three dollars, net that out from where the stock is trading, you have the stock trading uh, approximately uh, three, three to five dollars of its core operations. Okay. which is four times enterprise EV to EBITDA. That's essentially what Adam Johnson, uh, his multiple is higher because he's using somebody else's estimates. Okay. But the premise here is, Mark, that if you have a company that is generating free cash flow as they are, the opportunity for them to generate uh, even more growth if it's in the right hands. In this case, private equity potentially, a strategic buyer, if it's Microsoft, News Corp, AOL, how about Apple? Okay, okay, so, uh, and, and so that three or four times where it's currently trading could be seven plus, plus the synergy amount that Yahoo shareholders should garner, as I've been saying in the past, when you had the Yahoo Microsoft situation. So Yahoo, Yahoo shareholders, Mark, should be compensated for the full value and plus potentially synergistic uh, potential here. So private equities had their eyes on this and, and similar possible deals and mergers for quite some time. Yes, so let's take a step back here. Let's look at the macro view, okay? We focused on the valuation. Let's look at private equity here. Private equity have been uh, very active, as, you've, as, as you already know, okay? I believe they are kind of the low-hanging fruit. They've already focused on the low-hanging fruit, not only in tech, but in other spaces. You've seen Gymboree, Bain Capital, yes. you've seen NTB, uh, NTY, Burger King, et cetera, et cetera. I can go down the list. The point is that, in my opinion, is not, not necessarily low-hanging fruit, but close to low-hanging fruit. This situation is not low-hanging fruit. You really have to go up the tree. For them, for them to generate a decent return, get other people involved, this is a situation that might be very interesting for them on a risk-reward. Is Carol Bartz going to be able to fight off potential suitors? I don't believe so. Okay, so just like I took a, you know, I, I practiced pranayama this morning, breathing, there Mark. You know. She is as well, okay? So the, the fact that you know she's hired Goldman Sachs, that is basically a standard operating procedure for the company. They want to maximize shareholder value. I don't think what's going to replicate what has happened in the past over the two years with Microsoft is necessarily going to be replicated here. And that deal was turned down. So it, it begs the question then, uh, shareholder rights, the shareholder rights plan, yes. does it help or hurt in this regard? Um, it, it, it hurts, okay, so the shareholder rights in general, poison pills hurt shareholders, okay? I don't think that they're going to use that avenue. The avenue of hiring Goldman Sachs, in my, in my belief, is to maximize shareholder value. They're not going to take, be taken advantage as they were in the Microsoft situation in, in, in kind of the silo of back and forth. Step, step, step back here, okay? The bigger picture, okay, Mark here, is Yahoo, we have to kind of not just look at Yahoo, but look at where Apple is. Apple is, in one corner, the 800-pound gorilla or elephant. Okay. On the other side is maturity of tech companies. And where that stands is Microsoft, okay? You can't have this conversation with Yahoo if you can't, uh, without the conversation of Apple being the leader and Microsoft lack of the leadership. That's why, just like last week, they were having conversation with Adobe. Yeah. What would be great here is not only do they, imp with the search agreement that they currently have with Yahoo, they go the distance and actually acquire Yahoo, but also acquire Adobe. That would be a formidable competitor against Apple and Google. But Apple, I believe, also, if they want to be really competitive, because right now they have Google on their platform, iPhones. 
if they don't, if they really want to compete against Google, they could make that acquisition of it, a, a it Yahoo. Is the time right for that now? Yes, yes. That's the bottom line here, is that the, the timing is not today or tomorrow or next week, okay? And the stock reflects that because it's trading off. Right. But I believe, my point here, in, in the summary of things, that private equity is looking for returns. Yahoo needs to basically grow an opportunity to monetize value. And at the same time, peers, Microsoft, News Corp, AOL, if it's Apple or among others, need a, a, a platform like Yahoo. Sachin, in our last 30 seconds, let's just talk a little bit more about the dynamics because earlier you were telling me about EMC or yes. Microsoft. What's yes. going on there? Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so if you like Yahoo, and we went through some of the math and, 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 and the undervaluation there, um, if you put the, some of the parts together, you may like EMC because they own almost all of VMware. Okay, and the speculation this morning, Mark, just as a, as, as a story was hitting with additional details for Yahoo, was that, um, you you know, the FT was reporting um, that you know it, uh, Oracle or Microsoft could be interested in EMC. So EMC owns significant stake in, in VMware. So EMC is about $43 billion. If you less out their investment in VMware, okay, that's that's $27 billion of value right there. Yeah. Less that out, that's $16 or $17 billion. They are trading, if you use their cash flow or EBITDA measure, five times. So that is interesting because you not only have Intel investment a stake in VMware, but you have Cisco invest a stake in VMware, and then you have Oracle potentially interested. I don't believe that Oracle is necessarily going to make an acquisition the size of EMC right now, but it points it points, so the point of any of this is pointing people's attention, investors' attention, into how a situation where a, a stock like EMC potentially is undervalued. All right, Sachin, we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. We can talk about this for the rest of the hour. It's always good Thank to have you, you on, Mark. my friend. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sachin Shah, Capstone, joining us today, talking about mergers, Yahoo, Dynamics, a lot of stuff. We're going to get them back on as soon as we can because this is a story that is going to continue to develop over time.